It really came out of an idea of Van Gogh's. He called his studio the Yellow House, and he wanted to start a community of artists in the south, in the sunshine, you know, to get away from the madness of Paris. And in a small way, he certainly did it, and it was sort of inspired by that idea. But it's an artist community in the south in the sun, and it's probably one of the greatest pieces of conceptual art ever achieved. Basically, it's simply the creative outpourings of the artist cartoonist Martin Sharp and 15 people who decided to move in and live with him. There are painters, sculptors, writers and musicians, and what they've produced is zany, clever, funny, serious... Just a perfect day it had a pop flavour, a cultural flavour, a, a, a deep history with Vincent and Gauguin and some of the, uh, you know, their, their, their influences. To get entree into the Yellow House is that you had to do something creative, otherwise you sort of felt unwelcome. And I know that Martin was very good at if somebody walked in to sort of marvel at something is that he would sort of nod towards a tin of gold paint and there'd be a brush there and you were almost felt obliged to pick mm -hmm. that up and to finish painting a gold window mm -hmm. and um, eventually that there was most probably none of the original um, wall space that hadn't somehow been adorned or sort of added to or transformed. <laughs> We weren't dealing with a, the usual sort of gallery system. It was, we were running the gallery. The artists were running the gallery. So it was a different sort of scene altogether. We had people painting walls, but also performing in cabarets and plays, helping show films and things, so that everyone became involved on multiple levels. Little Nell starred in, in the cabarets, and um, she tap danced at the opening of Martin's first exhibition there. I sang wherever I could at the Yellow House in Sydney, for instance. Painters and artistes were the first to encourage me. Well, they didn't care that I wasn't little Patty. And we keep it open at night, and you know, it was a different, not a business, it was a, a, a theatre of sorts, I suppose. After nine o'clock at night, taxis would start arriving out the front with people who'd been out to dinner. And they'd just regularly come down and see what was going on at the Yellow House, mm. didn't they? Leslie mm. Warford and Geoffrey Smart, people would be getting well, cheek and, and the Pink Floyd came one night and stayed and watched one of the films we were showing, and uh, uh, that goggle fellow, um, uh, Marty Feldman, came in one night, and, he, you know, as Bruce said, he arrived late, and it, the place was more or less shut, and he's wandering around in the dark, and I'm, wa I'm walking through, going to my room, and suddenly these eyes came through the dark, and it was this uh, Marty Feldman, the comedian. Uh, he, he wanted to know how to get out. Well, <laughs> once he got in, it was very hard to get out because uh, it, was like, it was like a big uh, labyrinth. It's in a constant state of non-control. Therefore, anything can happen any moment of the day. You'll always be surprised in the yellow house. <laughs> You'd wake up in the morning and find that a room had been transformed overnight. Martin and people would keep working through the night. So the whole house was, it was an installation artwork. And uh, it was installed and then it became a performance space. So that inside the installation, performances took place. So it was a multi-media uh, art form. There wasn't necessarily an enormous budget and it was sort of what you could sort of find sometimes, you know, it was yeah. locating the giant red velvet theatre curtain and sort of draping it to help create the Belgian bourgeois interior for the Marguerites and things like that. Here we've got great works of art that were painted on the walls. Any of those more spectacular rooms, the stone room or the puppet theatre and the cloud room could have been in some way utilised, but as it happened, there wasn't the administration or the organisation to keep it that way, so it changed. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. 
it did work. You know, it was, somehow it, it worked. I think it was just because there was so much goodwill there at the time. You know, it was uh, <clears throat> that was really the inspiration for it. You know, the people's willingness to help and just share the adventure.